What's going on everyone? Ronan here. We got a lot of stuff to cover today, but before we get into that, you guys know the drill. Let's give the shout out to the patron that's been supporting us, which is Silver Hartzell. Thank you very much. And then let's do the usual YouTube things. Take a look at this analytical stat bar. Don't forget to hit the like and turn on notifications and the subscribe button. And also drop a comment to help fuel their algorithm. And also drop a comment to help fuel the algorithm. But with all of that being said, let's get into what if Ronan Charizard wrote the Pokemon anime Part 10. I hope you enjoy. We begin today's episode as we find ourselves on a beach of an unoccupied island in the southern part of the Kanto region. The beach seems devoid of life as waves crash onto it. However, as we pan out, we see that there is at least one living thing on the island. It's our hero Ash, and he seems to be unconscious after fighting with the ocean and the events of the previous part. However, there is a noticeable lack of some traveling companions as Ash is the only thing in sight. Even his faithful partner Pikachu is missing in action. This brings us to the point that Ash begins to stir as he awakens to find his current surroundings. He begins to shake off the haziness trying to figure out what happened by calling to his friends, but there is no answer, much to the boy's disappointment. Slowly, panic starts to set in as flashes of the prior day come surging back to him. His battle with Surge, then the lightning bird that sank the ship, Ash and Pikachu fighting the storming seas, then getting separated. The last thing he remembers is something grabbing him and pulling him ashore, before blacking out. It's here that the full weight of the situation begins to set in as Ash looks at his backpack. It's open with the contents spread out across the beach, like someone was searching for something. Now a bit irritated about the situation, Ash begins to pick up all of his possessions, taking inventory of all the items. It appears that nothing is missing, but the problem still stands that Ash is alone on this island, without his friends or any idea of where he is. Then it sets in. Ash reaches to his belt, only to find two out of the four Pokeballs that he keeps are missing, no doubt being pulled off by the thing that went through his bag. Ash looks at the balls, realizing that the only actual Pokeball he has with him is the one that may be the least equipped for the situation. However, Ash has little choice in the situation, needing whatever help he can get. As the ball pops, Nidoran lets out a small cry as it has been a while since it has been let out of the ball. Once its eyes can focus, Nidoran looks around, expecting to see Misty as she has been the one that has been spending the most time with it, while Ash was focusing on his other Pokemon. But once it realizes that it's just Ash here, a look of nervousness comes across the face that Ash immediately notices. Nidoran is shaking as the only thing it can think of is Pikachu being close. However, Ash tells the poison type that it doesn't have to worry. Pikachu isn't here right now, though these words carry pain with them for Ash. He then goes on to explain the situation, telling Nidoran that it's just them, so they will have to survey the island and locate their friends if they have any hope of rescue. While Nidoran does understand the severity of the situation, the lingering thought of Pikachu and its violent outbursts towards it are not far from its mind. So, with nothing else to do, the pair begin to walk down the beach, searching for any signs of help. A few hours pass, and then the only fruits of their collective labor that have been bared is some banana that Ash found while they were walking, that Ash and Nidoran have quickly gobbled up. Ash offers Nidoran the last bite of the yellow fruit, telling the mouse to keep up its strength. Nibbling on the last bit down, Nidoran can't help but wonder where Misty is, only for it to feel the hand of Ash patting and rubbing it behind the ears atop its head. This is strangely comforting, not even the redhead has been able to hit the spots that Ash is, but this stops when he tells it they need to keep moving, so they plow on, hoping to find any signs of help. It isn't long before the pair spot a trio of Pokemon playing on the beach. Ash stops knowing instantly what these are. Using his Pokedex, it is revealed that these Pokemon are the water starter of the Kanto region, Squirtle. The Dex mentions that these ones in particular seem to be on the younger side, as they are very small compared to the standard size of the species. But this falls on deaf ears as Ash runs in their direction, happy to have finally found something on the island alive besides him and Nidoran. However, when the infants clue in to what is actually heading towards their way, it doesn't get the reaction that Ash had intended, as cries of panic and fear ring across the beach. Ash stops dead in his tracks, trying to talk in a calm, soothing voice like Brock had showed him when dealing with Charmander, but this has no effect. Ash grows nervous as he tries to approach slowly to show them he means no harm. However, this was a mistake, as from out of nowhere, Ash and Nidoran are blasted with a stream of high-pressured water that sends them tumbling down the beach. Once Ash can finally see, he is graded with the sight of another Squirtle standing in front of the babies. However, this one is different. It is larger in size and wears sunglasses. The water type seems angry that Ash and Nidoran were so close to the infants, and fires another water gun trying to scare Ash off. The trainer tries to explain as he dodges the attack, but Squirtle 
isn't listening, firing water blasts while telling the babies to run for the cover of the tree line. The exchanges with Ash and Squirtle continue until the boy realizes they need to defend themselves, so he turns to Nidoran. A sense of fear runs down the spine as Ash hasn't really battled with it together, but it quickly becomes apparent that they will need to work together as Squirtle won't let up. So the timid mouse puts its best foot forward, signaling it's ready to try this crazy concept of working with Ash. Though it doesn't go well, Ash can see that Squirtle is a seasoned battler. The experience it has shown when it dodges a double kick then connects with a skull bash that sends Nidoran sliding across the beach. Knowing the only way they have a chance is for Ash to use Nidoran's smaller size, Ash tells it to keep its distance using a flurry of poison stings. While this helps with some damage, Squirtle uses its hard shell to take most of the hits, reducing it greatly. It then applies pressure with another series of water guns. However, Ash and Nidoran are starting to get their rhythm and catch on to the water type's attack pattern. This allows Nidoran to finally get in close with a double kick, causing some real damage. However, just as Ash is starting to feel confident in their progress, a barrage of water guns envelops not only him, but Nidoran and Squirtle. Suddenly, they are surrounded by a squad of the second stage of the water evolution, War Turtle. The group doesn't appear to be happy with the human that has invaded their home, or the Squirtle he is battling. This is demonstrated when the second stage hold Ash and Nidoran down while they begin attacking the Squirtle, almost like they are telling it this is punishment for being here. Ash doesn't understand or have a full context of the situation, but he knows this is wrong, yelling at the war turtle. Hey, stop it. Why would you attack a member of your own tribe? This isn't right. But this falls on deaf ears as the beating is finished, leaving Squirtle to limp away, doing its best to hold itself up. And this leaves Ash and Nidoran at the mercy of the war turtle. They demand that the two follow them as prisoners of the squad. Ash has no choice as Nidoran has frozen up in the intense situation. So, in order to protect it, Ash complies, picking up the poison type and telling it in a soothing voice, everything will be okay. Ash then follows at the command of the aggressive of water types as he looks back wondering if Squirtle is okay, but he has little time for this thought as the skies above the island are becoming dark with storm clouds. This causes an aura of nervousness to wash over the group of War Turtle. Ash can see it as he briefly stops to shudder at the sky, but things quickly move as thunder can be heard crackling off in the distance. The water types break their trance, telling Ash to move with a sense of urgency. It isn't long before Ash finds himself on the interior of the island, where it looks like a tribe of the water starters have made it their home. Home. There is a clear hierarchy as all of the Squirtles are either babies or homemakers while the second stage, War Turtle, are the warriors. This leaves the big question, who is the leader? But Ash doesn't have to wait long as he sees another turtle that is much larger atop of a rock that is withdrawn into its shell. At its base is a stack of food that seems to be an offering to it, but for some reason has gone untouched. Ash takes note of this as he looks around and something catches his eye. There are a group of eight Pokeballs that sit on a ledge near the giant turtle. Ash knows that two of them are his, but who do the other six belong to? However, Ash won't have to wait long as he is led to a cave that has been turned into a makeshift jail. Outside, a small battalion of war turtles stand guard as Ash is ordered inside. Then, a boulder is rolled in front of the opening to keep him from escaping. Ash wonders aloud what he is going to do, but is given the shock of his life when he immediately gets a response back. However, the voice sounds very familiar as a large imposing figure emerges from the shadows into the dim light. Lieutenant Surge, Ash questions? The gym leader goes on to explain that after the boat sank, he ended up on this island. He was then captured by the war turtle and imprisoned here while all of his Pokemon were confiscated. Is there any way out, Ash says? poking around in the bit of light that they have. Not that I can see, Surge responds. There are some weak points in the cave walls, but it would take some power to break through, even more than I'm capable of. It is here that Ash perks up, saying that he might have a way to help. On the outside of the cave, the turtle tribe is scrambling about as the storm has now hit the island. But it's not the storm that has everyone running in fear, but the harbinger of it, the flying thunderbird that sank the SSN, Zapdos. It is attacking the island with its electric attacks. This is where we see all all of the water types begin to gather around the mound that the large turtle sits on as they begin to pray to it. From just beyond the tree line, the squirtle that was attacked sits and watches, thinking about what's happening and if it should get involved. Back in the cave, Ash reveals that Nidoran is in his vest. The poison type has calmed down enough to understand what its trainer's talking about. Great, a baby is our hope, Surge says.
says sarcastically, this just gets a look from Ash that says, say one more word and you'll regret it, causing the leader to tighten up. Okay, what's the plan? Ash inquires about the weak spots that are in the wall. Surge shows him the locations, stating that with enough power, they could break through. Turning to Nidoran, Ash says they need its help. Their friends are in danger and they need to get out of here. Ash then says that its double kick is the key for them to escape, so they could rescue the rest of Ash's Pokemon and find Misty and Brock. While Nidoran doesn't like the idea of finding Pikachu, it does want to find Misty as it has become really good friends with the Redhead. So Nidoran agrees to help trying its hand at a double kick, but its first attempt fails, causing Surge to sigh. But Ash tells him to keep quiet. Nidoran can do this. Turning to the mouse, Ash says that it's the only hope. Ash believes in it. There is more strength deep within it. Ash can see that Nidoran just needs to believe in its own abilities. Something in this moment causes a change inside the mouse. A sense of vigor envelops it. Ash stands back while Nidoran begins to attack the wall with a flurry of double kick. Its determination showing through, as with each kick, a crack grows slightly, until light and wind begin to seep through the opening. This is where Ash tells the mouse that he will help it with the next hit, but he's not alone as Surge tells him that they will do it together. The three begin to charge furiously, throwing all the weight that they can at the wall to break through. The force of this tackle is enough to cause the cave to collapse in on itself, forcing Ash and Surge to think this will grab the attention of their captors. But this has the exact opposite effect, as they are all preoccupied with the source of the storm, the lightning foul that Surge battled on the SSN. The gym leader stands up telling Ash they have to go. He then begins to drag him away from the site of the battle, only for Ash to pull his arm away. No, I'm not going, Ash says. They need our help, so I'm going to help them. Ash then runs off with Nidoran in tow as Surge watches in disbelief. However, he's not the only one staring. The lone Squirtle saw the exchange from the trees, again thinking about the situation. Moments later, Ash arrives at the beach, only to be met with the sight of a war-torn area. The bird that Surge called Zapdos is attacking everything in sight. This is where Ash tells Nidoran that they need to draw the attention of Zapdos. He will do that while Nidoran helps the others get to safety. The mouse doesn't want to leave Ash, but its trainer tells the mouse he knows that it will be strong and Nidoran can do anything. Ash believes in it, and since they are so strong, it's their job to protect the weak, so they will have to work together. Nidoran nods, understanding what Ash is saying. The two then split up, with Nidoran helping gather the straggling babies while Ash begins to draw the attention of the bird. He pokes fun, taunting it causing Zapdos to focus solely on him. Once Ash is sure that he has the bird's attention, he begins to run in the direction opposite of everyone else, hoping to create some distance. Zapdos begins to fire thunderbolts wildly at Ash. The boy does his best to avoid the attacks as he runs, but he isn't running just anywhere. Ash has his sights set on the ledge of his Pokeballs where they are resting. Luckily, it doesn't take long for him to get there. Unsure of which ones are his, Ash picks up the first one and throws it. Unfortunately for our hero, it's not the one he was expecting as Raichu pops from the ball. The mouse is confused at first not to see its trainer as Ash tries to inform him what's going on. He needs the help to stop Zapdos. Raichu sees the situation at hand and realizing that he may have no choice but to work with the boy. So at the command of Ash, Raichu lets out a thunder that strikes Zapdos, stunning it temporarily, but this has little effect as Zapdos is right back on the attack. Realizing they will have to battle, Ash begins to give commands to Raichu. While you would think this would work rather well due to Ash's experience with Pikachu, the truth is that Raichu couldn't be more different than Ash's starter as it is far slower and its timing is far different than Pikachu's. This results in the mouse getting hit with a drill peck, sending it into a tree. Asking if it's okay, Ash struggles to think of a way out of this, but he won't have to wait as a very deep voice gives an order to Raichu. Turning, Ash sees Surge, who tells Ash to help Nidoran get the other Pokemon to safety. He has a score to settle with this pigeon. Ash nods, gathering up all the balls. He throws three of them, to which Voltorb, Magneton, and Charmander are freed. The Orb and the Magnet join Surge in his battle, while Ash tells Charmander what's going on. They need to save the young Squirtles and get them to cover. It is here that a realization sets in. Surge uses Electric-type Pokemon to battle Zapdos, which causes the storm to grow more intense. This is resulting in lightning striking at a higher rate. Ash sees this when the lightning hits the area they are in. Charmander uses his Metal Claw to counter some of it, but it's not enough, forcing the two to run for cover. However, Ash notices the lightning is being drawn to some baby Squirtles that have been trapped by some rocks. Luckily, they are being defended by the one in sunglasses, but it is struggling in the defending of the babies. Then it happens. The rogue Squirtle is struck down by a stray bolt. Squirtle drops, trying to defend the babies. Seeing this, Ash tells Charmander they need to hurry. The lightning is coming down harder than before. Both rush 
rush in, hoping of making any kind of difference. Ash orders Charmander to use Metal Claw, drawing most of the bolts into itself. However, there are too many to deflect, and a small group of turtles are still in massive danger. Then, Ash sees it. The Squirtle that is unable to move is about to be struck. Without thinking, Ash jumps in the path of the bolt, taking its full power and protecting the tiny turtle. The water type can't believe that a human would do that for it. Ash is crouched over it, asking if Squirtle is okay, but it's stunned by both the paralysis and the actions of Ash. This is where Nidoran and Charmander join their trainer. They see that Ash is hurt, so they attempt to move him out of harm's way, but they alone are unable to do so. This is where Squirtle gains some sort of new strength as it orders the mouse and Salamander to grab the babies. They are getting out of here. Then in a display of power above its evolution, Squirtle picks Ash up above its head and begins to run. With his other Pokemon in tow, the turtle leads them to a cave for shelter. It's here that Ash sees this place is the one where Squirtle lives. Then flashbacks begin to happen to where Ash remembers how he got to the island. It was you, he says, looking at the water type. You saved me. But the war turtle were the ones who ravaged his bag and stole his Pokeballs. They missed Nidorans because Ash was beginning to wake up when they were taking them. Thank you, Ash says. You saved me, and I can never pay you. But we can't stay here, the boy says as he struggles to his feet, much to the worry of his Pokemon. We have to go help the others. But everyone, including Squirtle, tries to stop Ash. No, he says. We can't leave them out there. Surge is trying to stop the bird, and we have to help. Then Ash turns to Squirtle, asking if Zapdos is the reason the island is in such bad shape, to which it confirms. This just reaffirms Ash's decision. They need to do something. He then turns to Squirtle, telling it to stay here with the little ones, while he and his Pokemon go help. This causes something to happen in Squirtle. Ash's selflessness affects the turtle in a way that he hasn't been in a long time, not since he was first chosen as a starter Pokemon. It then watches as Ash runs off into the eye of danger. Over with Surge, he is doing his best to defeat the bird, but his Electro-types are proving that they have met their match. That is, until Ash arrives ordering Charmander to use a fire spin on Zapdos. This catches the bird off guard as the fire envelops it blocking the surrounding view. Seeing his opening, Surge commands Raichu, Voltorb, and Magneton to all use thunder. In this moment, they are able to collectively overpower the electric aura that surrounds Zapdos and finally strike it with an electric attack that causes the bird to lose flight and fall into the water just off the shore of the island. This causes the sky to begin to calm as the storm has subsided and the light begins to return to the island. Ash joins Surge to ask if he's okay. While the leader and his Pokemon are a bit winded, they will all be fine after a bit of rest. It is here that all of the island's inhabitants begin to come out from their hiding places to see the humans that save them. This includes the lone Squirtle and the babies it was guarding. Everyone is shocked that the humans would do that for them, but things quickly turn sour when some of the War Turtle begin to pick another fight with Squirtle. Seeing this, Ash comes to the fence of the water type telling its evolutions to stop. Squirtle put its own life on the line to save the young ones, so they have no right to treat it like that. And this is where Surge chimes in, saying he thinks he knows why they are treating that Squirtle so poorly. It's because this is an island of wild Pokemon, and that one isn't wild but abandoned. He recalls some time back battling a trainer with a Squirtle that wore sunglasses like that. However, they lost to him pretty bad. They never returned to the gym, so if he had to guess, the trainer abandoned Squirtle. It's a shame, cause the water type is powerful. It was the trainer that lacked the ability to bring out its power. I see, Ash says. Well, that's still no excuse. It's done nothing but try to help. Well, we can't do anything about the laws of the wild, Surge says. This is their island, and if that's the law, then that's the law. Ash wants to scold the war turtle some more, but his anger is stopped when a loud groan can be heard. This causes all the water types to rush in the direction of the giant turtle that Ash saw earlier in the day. Surge and he follows as everyone gathers around it in concern. It is here that Surge notices something about the Pokemon that he identifies as Blastoise. Then, without saying a word, he rushes off across the island, gathering different berries and grass he then returns to the side of Blastoise with a grinding stone and the stuff that he had collected. This causes all the smaller turtles to get defensive, afraid of what the human is trying to do. But Ash stops them from doing anything. If they meant harm, then they would have done something already. All he or Surge have done since they got here is try to help, so give them a chance. This is enough to get them to stop for the time being as Surge completes his self-appointed task. Ash inquires what he's doing, to which the leader responds that he may not seem that bright, but he recognizes a paralysis when he sees one. Surge says that that Blastoise must have battled with Zapdos and wound up on the losing end. So he's making a paralyzed heal from the things that are on the island. Surge then begins applying the remedy to Blastoise that shows immediate effects when the Titan Turtle begins to stir. Suddenly, its head pops out of the shell only to be met with a flail of anger at the sight of the humans. But this is where the sunglasses Squirtle steps in defending both Ash and Surge from its wrath. 
But everything is interrupted when a familiar cry can be heard from off the coast. Zapdos has regained its consciousness and isn't too happy. Realizing its people are in danger, Blastoise prepares to engage in battle once more, but Surge yells for it to stop. Let him handle it. The leader then walks out to the water and approaches the bird. Zapdos lets out an angry cry, but Surge is undeterred, showing the bird he means it no harm. Things seem to calm down a bit as Surge talks with Zapdos. Everyone watches this for a moment till Surge comes back to the shore. He asks Ash if he has the rest of his Pokeballs, to which the boy nods, handing them over. Surge then thanks Ash for being the pain in the side that he has been, cause things may not have turned out like this. He then turns, saying that Ash needs to be careful. Zapdos is a Pokemon that isn't natural in this form. Then with a cryptic warning, Surge says that the Kanto region is in trouble. Evil has infiltrated it at every level, so Ash should be careful with who he trusts. Ash has so many questions to this statement, but Surge tells the boy that he can't answer them now, as he has to go. He's going to help Zapdos find its place in this world. After all, he is responsible for it being here in the first place. Well, what about the gym, Ash questions? Surge tells him that's not important now, but maybe one day he will return. This is the last thing Surge says before mounting Zapdos and flying off into the sunset. Ash can do nothing but wonder what the leader's warning meant. However, he has little time to contemplate this as he must now deal with another real problem. How does he get off this island? This is where Blastoise makes its way to the shoreline. It then signals for Ash to get on its back. It will take it back to the mainland. Ash looks back at the island, then to his Pokemon. Charmander, Nidoran, you guys did great, he says, rubbing them both on the head. I'm really proud of you both. Both of the Pokemon respond with a cry of happiness at this positive reinforcement. Squirtle seeing this, begins to ponder something as Ash recalls his two Pokemon. With one last look, Ash waves bye to the island and its inhabitants as he and Blastoise disappear off into the distance. A few hours later, Ash finds himself on the beach of the mainland. Ash thanks Blastoise for the ride, hopping off onto the beach. This is where Ash notices that they were followed by something, the sunglasses Squirtle. It comes onto the beach and looks Ash into the eyes. Smiling, Ash says he knows Squirtle has been treated badly by people before, but how about it come with him? He believes in its power and will never give up on it. Squirtle looks at Blastoise who nods before disappearing beneath the waves. Ash then pulls out a Pokeball presenting it to the water type as it takes off its sunglasses to reveal the look of joy in its eyes before tapping the ball to join Ash as his fifth member of his team. And this is where we are going to leave things for now. So tell me, how did you feel about this part? What was with that warning Surge gave to Ash? What did Surge mean by he is the reason Zapdos is here? And how do you feel about the growth that Ash had with Nidoran? How about the way that Ash caught Squirtle? Let me know in the comments down below. Alright trainers, I hope you have your Pokedexes ready, because the Pokemon we met today are Squirtle, Warturtle, Blastoise, Magneton, and Voltorb. And that's all we had for today's video. I really appreciate you guys stopping by to watch all the way to the end. And I just wanted to say thank you for that. If you guys really enjoy my content, consider following me on some of my other platforms like Discord, where you can get to know other people who are interested in what ifs, or on Twitter, where I post sometimes behind the scenes updates. Or if you want to help the channel grow a little bit extra, why don't you consider donating like the people right here have, as whatever you could offer could help us get to a larger audience by helping us get new videos done, or some of the projects that we more custom art is getting kind of expensive. So we want to make sure that we have the funds to do that. But with all that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed everything and I will see you in the next video.